One of the most tragic chapters in Yoruba history was the unfortunate Kiriji War, which lasted for 16 years. It is today regarded as perhaps the world's longest civil war. Find out in this video how powerful was Ibadan that it was able to combat several Yoruba states for years without being defeated. And how did this war even ease the British so hard that they had no choice than to bring it to an end? After a year, who used to be the most powerful kingdom of Yoruba had been weakened by several wars. Some smaller states strives to fill up its position, and that includes Ibadan and Ijaye. One day, Ibadan and Ijaye had a clash which led to the destruction of Ijaye. After this war, it became certain that Ibadan is the most powerful state in Yoruba and it wanted to bring every other state under its control. By 1875, it has already had Ijeshaland, Ekiti, Akoko and Igomino under its control. It appointed some officers called Ajeles to oversee the affairs of these controlled areas. Ibadan became satisfied with this and their new achievements. But there is still an unfinished business during the Ijayi war, and that is the trade routes that Ijebu and Egbas refused to open. This is the route from which they receive firearms and other goods, plus the fact that the Egbas and Ijebus are to be part of the Ibadan controlled states according to their plan. So it's very important and Ibadan declared war on the Jebu and Egbas in 1877. On the other hand, the Ajeles or officers appointed to oversee the controlled states became corrupt and power drunk, demanding ridiculous homage and exorbitant tributes. One of them even raped the wife of a warlord in his jurisdiction. Because of all this, Yoruba vassal states of Ijeja and Ikiti revolted and massacred the Ibadan appointed Ajeles. Ibadan declared war on them too, marking the beginning of the Kiriji Wars. This war was fought during the day, and yes, it was fought at the middle of the night as well. The cannon guns sounded just like this, and that's how the war got its name, one of its names, Ogun Kiriji. Ibadan fought on five different fronts, first against the Egba, who confined their activities to raids and surprise attacks, secondly against the Ijebu, who pitched a camp against them under Balogun or North Wakon. Thirdly, the main war at Kiriji in the east, where their forces fought a long battle against the Ikiti and Ijesha, called Ikiti Parapo forces under the command of Ogedengbe. They had also recruited soldiers from Igomino, Akoko, Egbe, Kaba, and Oworo into their army. Fourthly, Ibadan fought at Ofa in the north, where they faced the Ilori Fulani, who pitched their camp against the people of Ofa, who are allies of Ibadan, and finally at Ileife, where the Ife people joined the alliance against them in 1882. Ibadan forces was led by Are Obadoki Latosha, and in spite of Ibadan's disadvantages in the war, these five forces could not effect his defeat. On the 16th year of the war, British merchants at Lagos coast complained bitterly about the effect of the war on their trade because trade routes to Ibadan was still closed. So the British intervened and a peace treaty was signed to end the civil wars in 1886. Despite this, 
Egba has Enijebu will still close the trade routes to Ibadan, which is going to be a story for another day. Share my video and follow this channel if you want to hear more about that story.